Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the On Time On Target, a morning of brief where we invest in fighter pod precision on a daily basis. Futures are up again this morning, so obviously uh, that's good news for the long-term uh, health of the market. And there's a couple of different headlines coming out uh, today. <coughs> Excuse me, they're already out. That'll be digested through the market. You've got the new budget. You know, more trillions, more trillions, more trillions uh, in spending, and a projected. You know, we're going to run a deficit of at least a trillion dollars a year for the next decade or so. So, you know. Uh, good news from a spending standpoint, uh, bad news from a how is this all going to end? It's starting to go into the you know, curiosity like crypto. How is it all going to end? Well, I don't know. How is definite sp deficit spending forever going to end? I don't know, but we're going to take advantage of it, of course, while it's pushing the market higher and then uh, take appropriate precautions later when uh, the chickens come home to roost on that plan. But today, our topic of the day, as you can see in the chat, excuse me, is 529 plans. So save them for college, either for yourself. Remember, you can put these in your own name. Uh, you can put do these for your kids. Uh, if you are a grandparent or an uncle or an uh, aunt, whatever your role in life, if you want to set up a 529 for a child, you can, um, or have the parents set it up and then you contribute to it. So it's kind of interesting. So it is an asset that's held by the parent. So what's interesting is if a child wants to contribute to their own 529, they are actually gifting the money to their parent for them to put the money into the 529. So it's kind of a weird uh, relationship, but there's some uh, maximums associated with that. 15,000 a year, that's the gift tax. Most people know that. Um, so you're limited to 15K a year, but you can super fund them uh, doing five years up front, up to 75,000 if you want uh, per child. And uh, you and your spouse can do it if you're married, right? So really when somebody with three kids says, hey, what's the, what's the max I can put into the 529? And I'm like 450,000. You know, that usually is kind of, <laughs> you know, there's some chuckling after the, really? And I'm like, well, yeah, and here's why. And then I break down the math and all, but I've had several people ask. And I've also had uh, one of my, you know, higher end clients um, not do that much, but uh, over half of that much into, you know, it came into a lump sum of money and that's how they decided to protect it from taxation. So obviously if the money has to be used for, you um, education, but there are a lot of expenses out there that can be fall under the 529. So it's pretty, uh, pretty cool. And you don't pay any taxes on any of that stuff. And you can switch beneficiaries all over the place. So it's a lot of things to like about the 529. And why are we talking about today? Well, normally we talk about it on May 29th, which is 529 day, but the market's closed tomorrow. So we talk about it today. So that's our topic of the day. We're also going to talk about tax loss harvesting. Some interesting thing that came across uh, from an article this morning is if you're in crypto and you happen to be taking some losses right now, like you're the person that bought in at the top, um, crypto is a currency. So it is not considered a security. So there is not a, a wash sale rule associated with it. Kind of like your Forex traders that trade, you know, pennies every day, all day, you know, 22 and a half hours a day. I think the markets are open for Forex. So um, yeah, so now it would be a great time to if you were down big in Bitcoin, Ethereum, Ripple, Dogecoin, Shiba, whatever your coin is, um, you can sell it and buy it right back and now tag and harvest those losses. So we're going to talk a little bit about the mechanics of doing so and how you do that in the stock world, which is what we kind of care about. Um, but there is uh, there's certainly a way to do it and then make sure you don't trip the wash sale rule, which obviously can cause you tax problems later on. So that's what we've got for today. We do have some longs and shorts. I will tell you this, volume's an issue today. Um, I, I'm a little league player, so I don't take Fridays off before the uh, th big three-day weekends. But I tell you, the a lot of people do. So volume is a real problem today because uh, a lot of people aren't working. A lot of people are already into the Hamptons or on their way to the Hamptons with the family uh, this morning. <coughs> I am not. I am here with you. <laughs> so, um, but the, as soon as you get into some trading stuff, just realize that the volume isn't there uh, that is normally there. Uh, Apex, thanks for putting some names in. I like that. The only thing uh, I talked about earlier is why, why is uh, low volume 17,000 there. So if you're gonna trade a low volume stock, you can, you just have to wait. You have to wait for the volume to come in. So we'll talk, we'll, we'll pull that up if we're not doing anything else at the open uh, to watch the volume. You need that swoosh, if you will, of the volume coming in before you can get in. Cause you may be swinging a bat of 5,000 shares yourself. 
And if you're uh, swinging a bat that has, you know, 25% of the volume, that's not going to work out. There's going to be slippage, uh, especially if you enter in, out, enter in and out with a market order, your average price is going to be all kinds of screwed up. So um, the other one was Beyond Meat. Yeah, but we did it yesterday, right? So uh, just it's, it's tough for it to make that run two days in a row. So yeah, continued momentum. Um, I don't like continued momentum. Now the short squeeze, now that's a story, right? Because now if you're going to put in Beyond Meat, with uh, AMC and GameStop, then it's a no brainer, right? You just buy it and wait, wait for it to move, you know, 10% and sell it <laughs> kind of thing. So, all right. Thank you so much. A lot of covered there in the open, but uh, let's see uh, if you're catching us on replay, make sure you subscribe, hit the notifications bell. If you want to join us live, there's 25 bucks. Uh, you can get it in the room into this chat that I'm talking about and we can hash these things out before the market open to make you money. All right. With that, let's go ahead and get started. Back everyone here's our lineup card for the day make sure you have your q a window set up as well as your chat window set up appropriately standard disclaimer applies you have to do your own due diligence before acting upon anything you hear this morning make sure that you have uh, if you want to go have full disclaimer information go to ototnow.com all right today friday may 28th for the big weekend hopefully you have good plans or like me who's been on the road quite a bit we're doing nothing that's our plan so we're sitting around, we're actually enjoying uh, being home and doing some uh, to-do list stuff around the house. You're getting caught up on some things that honestly have been stacking up while we've been on the road. So uh, hopefully you and your families enjoy uh, whatever it is you decide to do out there. All right, mission objectives, grow our money, protect our money, and live off our money. Today, we're talking specifically about growing our money inside a tax sheltered plan. So uh, when you think of college savings, 529 plans, let's follow the math real quick on taxes. So you make money through your job or your investments or or whatever, uh, you have money coming in, that money is taxed as it goes into your bank account, right? Uh, so, or it's not if it's a municipal or whatever, but anyhow, the money goes into your bank account first. So it's already past the tax fence. And then now it goes into a fund uh, for the 529, which are run by states and you can use any state, blah, blah, blah. We'll get into that a little bit afterwards after the market open. But once you put it in there, now that money that's already been taxed can grow tax-free uh, forever until you use it for education expenses. We'll talk about some of the, yes, you can use it for other stuff and pay a penalty, pay the tax, you know, blah, blah, blah. But primarily uh, education is expensive enough to where if you have a couple kids, uh, you can pretty well stock this thing pretty good knowing that they're either gonna deplete it or if they happen to get a scholarship or something uh, or don't go to school, you know, happens. Um, then you, they can turn around and you can take this money and, and point it towards whoever in the family is going to use this. Uh, say you have two kids like me, say they neither of them go to college, hopefully not like me, but we'll see, right? You don't know, they have their own lives. So <clears throat> but that money, if they don't go to college, that money can sit and grow and grow and grow until they have kids, you know, hopefully many moons from now, but until they have kids and then that can be used for their kids. So when you think of a 529, it's also, uh, if you've ever heard of the Dynasty 529 uh, commentary, uh, yeah, you can, uh, you, you're, you're actually, once you put, I think it's 625,000 is the absolute max in an individual <clears throat> 529 plan before you can't put any more. But then the trick there is, as long as you have another beneficiary in the family, you simply open another one, put in another 625K. Uh, so obviously for the very rich, I would say the eight figure club uh, is putting you know significant amounts of money in here and basically giving their entire family free education from everybody who 
is, has already been born to all of the unborn children in the family chain. Uh, so anyhow, it's quite the, quite the program. All right, question today, what is tax loss harvesting? We talked about in the open. We'll, we'll come back to that here at the end. All right, our floater today, long, short, open, short, long. We're gonna look at the markets around the world. Come back for the headline review. And then we're gonna look at the long-term investments, which are not those, those are from yesterday. Um, basically, since we're talking 529, I'll just talk the uh, QQQ. Uh, what I tend to do is, you know, I manage these for folks. And for the younger folks, if you're, if you're you know, age five and below, it's hyper aggressive, right? I don't, I'm not trying to be smart with the market. I'm just going hyper, 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 hyper aggressive uh, for at least for the first five years and let it grow. And then you get a little smarter as they get into middle school and approach in high school. And depending on the family situation, you may not stay, uh, you know, I don't stay ultra risk on in my, uh, in my, with my kid stuff now that they're approaching college age. But anyhow, uh, we'll take a look at the QQQ uh, there. Short-term execution and all that is standard contingencies, uh, academic resources standard as well. We did see a situation yesterday uh, with Predator where you saw Beyond Meat and it kind of smacked. Um, the, you know, it happened fast, which, you know, it's fast moving ball game. So pay attention at the open, but, um, it smacked my entry price and, you know, he got a delayed entry on it or a sloppy entry as we kind of call it in the trading world. Just realize you can do that. You just have to adjust your numbers a little bit, uh, based off your entry or uh, another option we didn't talk about there yesterday, Apex was if you don't like your entry, you can kill the trade. Um, if you get an entry and the math is not going to work based off of what you're looking at. Uh, and when I was doing this full time, I would enter a trade. And then I would say I would kill my trades about 20% about of the time. And here's why. A, I'm super conservative, right? I, I hate, absolutely hate losing money. So <laughs> when I'm taking the trade and I get a crappy entry, it's one of the, I'd rather be back out of it uh, than spend all the processing time you know, which is going to be seconds, right? So 30 seconds into it before I figure out, well, the math is jacked, right? So I'd rather think of it. Uh, yeah, there you go. I would agree. That's, an, you know, Apex brings up in the in the chat. There's confirmation pop-ups. Now there's a danger, right? Where, you know, confirm this trade, right? Um, but yeah, there are some things that pop up. You can disable that. Um, if you want to get into this full-time, I was using hotkeys. Yeah, like, you know, you're Control X, Control V as you're cut and paste and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, you can use hotkeys for this stuff. Uh, I prefer to have the tickers all kind of set up off to the side for my longs and shorts. That way I can populate them pretty quick because you're doing a lot of math on the fly, right? So, anyhow, something to consider. All right, let's take a look at the market. We'll go around to TD Ameritrade ThinkPipes platform. Here's the short term stuff. I have three longs in there CRM, Hexo. Here's that YY that I was talking about. And you come all the way down to the bottom and you can kind of see the uh, the low vol and it looks, you know, kind of sketchy there in the in the gray, if you will. <clears throat> so we'll watch that open. Hopefully we'll get that big rush of uh, volume. I like it better short than HP. It just doesn't have the volume. Um, HP is kind of cheap and it's kind of a strong name. So the fact it's missed earnings and down is all sets us up for, you know, the, the exact, it meets the numbers 100% for my trading plan. Um, where YY does not, but I kind of like YY better. But uh, we'll get back to that in a minute. Okay, here's where we are in the market. So we're still in that congestion area of that 400 to 422. You know, we also, are not, you know, we have a, a boom day today. We could hit, hit new highs. It's kind of crazy. It doesn't seem like we're <clears throat> get, staying close to new highs, but we actually are. Uh, let's go to the five day. On the SPY, you can see we're kind of just breaking north of that congestion now. I don't know. Fridays before three day weekends tend to be, uh, Big, big, big up days and it's low volume. So a lot of just a lot of buyers. And then again, a lot of people aren't working uh, today. All right, let's go over to uh, CNBC. We will take a look at these futures green across the board. Let's refresh real quick. All right, all that looks good uh, between zero and half a percent up uh, across the board. Asia, bam, Japan up 2%. What's going on? I need to move window out of the way here. Uh, mm, doesn't really say why Japan's up so big, but that's all right. All right, Europe up pretty decent across the, the board there. Hitting record highs, that's interesting. Record highs, had a discussion yesterday on why I don't um, really diversify. If I print out your stat sheet for you, which is your analysis of portfolio, most people don't care. Um, if you care, I can send it to you, but it actually shows you geographically and has the world map and shows you the heat map of where you're invested in and stuff. And again, 
predominantly it's you know 85 to 90 percent in the u.s and north america you know because we do have some canadian firms not so much mexican firms but some canadian firms in there and then uh, some china and that's about it a little bit of sprinkling in india because like trade desk you know has a presence in india but other than that it's so so centric i pretty well avoid europe just because there's so many things that concern me there that i uh, i don't want to I don't want to get caught up in that, but they're hitting all, you know, all time highs, but yeah, negative interest rates over there. There's just a lot to uh, worry about. All right. Let's see. Bonds 1.6 kind of holding steady much, not much to talk about oil up to 67. So nudging towards 70, uh, an oil demand. We shall see. You know, we talked about gold and silver yesterday, basically flat crypto selling off again. So, <laughs> you know, a lot of the, uh, who knows how this will, how this will end. All right, back to uh, AMC is up again. So you heard Kramer right at the beginning. If you logged in a little bit early, uh, you saw him talking about the meme stocks, AMC, um, GameStop, maybe Beyond Meat. We'll see. I'm not following it that closely to know. Um, but it's the, uh, hey, oh, you know, but it's the, um, you know, disc, they're not correlated to the stock, right? So it's it's really just trading on its own kind of thing. No, here's a great sign. And, I, and I, I do like Tom Brady, but here we go. So this is when you call a market top in something is when you have Tom Brady, noted investor, Tom Brady says he's a big believer in crypto. Okay, that's like the old days when Ashton Kutcher piled into, you know, pets.com or, you know, it, it's this. And when your Uber driver is giving you stock tips, that's when you just log in and start selling crap, right? Um, so the fact that Tom Brady's a big believer, oh my goodness, yep, probably time to sell your crypto. Um, nothing against you, Tom, but come on, man. Uh, that's just one of those things that just marks it's, it's a danger sign. Uh, Apple, you know, I love Apple. Got our sell rating from neutral to sell, predicting a 30% stock decline. Uh, I'll come on here and apologize to these folks if, if that actually happens, because I just see there's no way that that's happening. Anyway, okay, there you go. There's Tom. Good morning, Tom. All right, let's go over and get us set up, let's get ourselves set up for the open. Again, I like the longs better than the shorts here. Um, CRM uh, crushed earnings and uh, Hexo we'll get to here in a second. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the on time on target play of the day. Yeah, four screens in front of you on the Think Pipes platform to TV Ameritrade. Ding, ding, ding. There is the opening bell. We have the one minute chart for the spy here showing us uh, some strength going into the open. You have CRM, which is salesforce.com, crushed earnings yesterday. Uh, Hexo going along is a uh, acquisition uh, pot play. Uh, again, lower volume, so just uh, keep an eye on that. And then your short today is a YY. Uh, again, watch the volume down here, 28,000 shares so far in the first minute. So really to swing a big bat at that, you really need to uh, wait for it to clicks up to the 100,000 here uh, before we go. All right, a lot of motion here. It seems like a lot of motion. Remember, this is a move from 239 to 240. Uh, it is hard to trade the bigger names. You need at least a $2 stop if you're going to get into uh, CRM uh, this morning. So more interested in Hexo. So there was an acquisition. Uh, they acquired somebody, uh, and uh, that took them. Um, that's good news. They're almost at the upper bound there. We would need we would need CRM to come in some before we can hop in that. All right, let's look over here and see what we've got for. Uh, you're looking at a dollar stop and YY. High of the day up here at 82. So really, you would want to enter at 81. It's almost down at 80 without the volume to really support it. You're you're that that'd be a leap of faith uh, to be able to uh, go into there. You see the um, trying to get the earnings to pull up. Apex put the story in there earlier. Come on, man. Why is the that's supposed to come up? The uh, how they did. You can see they had negative earnings, but I don't know why it's not coming up. Anyhow, can't really take that. Uh, Hexo, not really liking that. Let's look at some other names. Express, which is a retailer, uh, going along. Already up out of our window there this morning, and a PE. Uh, PE firm increase their stake and express again, retail play nice low, uh, low point there, but no real entry here. Now uh, let's see 
Hibbit Sports, another retail play, HIBB. They were gapping up earlier. They've sold off. Hold on, we might get an entry here. Um, there's their earnings. Sold down low of the day is at 88. We would need a dollar, so 89. <whistles> that is certainly set up for success. It's kind of out of our window though. If you're dying for a trade, you could take Hibbit here with uh, set your stop down at 87, uh, 87.90. But I'll just almost sit that while I was talking about it. Um, anyhow. Your point to take this higher is at 89 when it goes higher. I'm not going to take the trade. Um, I don't like it that much. Uh, let's see. CRM's kind of too far gone. We're not going to look at that. Uh, Ulta Beauty uh, beat earnings. They were up 5% earlier. Kind of tough to trade due to the uh, price point again. Three forty-one. Nope, the entry point's too far gone on uh, that one. So can't do Ulta. And then there's a Pharma play. It's also low vol. S Y R S was up six percent earlier without a storyline is the issue. It's just uh, it's just in motion. So you can't really do that. All right. Hibbit Sports. Uh, I'm not going to do it, but if you want to trade, uh, you can go here and then uh, 8890. And then once it goes to 90 and high, or excuse me, 89, you would go long. I don't love this. The volume's kind of light if you look at the bottom, a few thousand shares. But anyhow, 89 would be your entry point higher. You would have to hit it here. If it doesn't hit it here, I would just give up on it. And doesn't look like it's going to hit it here. So, all right, nothing across the board for the trades. Let's see, uh, HPQ, that's the one we didn't look at. Uh, HPQ short. All right, looks like this would have worked. Let's see if we would have gotten this entry. So it goes up here initially, sets that. So the high of the day is going to be 3060. So the entry point's at 3030. Um, yeah, had we had this pulled up, it's a strong company though. Um, 3030 would have been the entry with a 30 cent stop. So then that takes it to 30, 29, 29, four would be the, uh, would be the exit point. It looks like that might be going on to work. Um, no entry here in a Hibbit sports. So don't touch that. So, all right, we're going to get out of trading mode. Sorry. Uh, let's see what I have. Uh, yes. When the guys on the basketball court, yeah, trading phones in between games, right? Or trading phones, trading crypto in between their games on the basketball court, right? That's key to success, uh, right there. Uh, I saw the late join there. Uh, this is what we were looking at uh, this morning. We didn't get a trade and in, entry into any of this stuff. Um, so, anyhow, that's what we're. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on in the big picture. AMC up thirty three percent. Oh my goodness! Let's just stop the stop the presses and go right back to AMC. This is insane. We'll go out to a five day chart just so you can see the insanity. I do have an investor that insisted yesterday uh, at the open that I bought a large chunk and I did and look how right they were, uh, basically a double off of a pretty sizable chunk. <laughs> I was like, I don't recommend it, but uh, and he, he's like, I know the risk, do it. And I'm like, okay. Um, and uh, wow, the double. And then uh, you wanted to add more. I talked about that and now look at me, right? Um, <laughs> so that's kind of crazy on how that's, how that's moving. Where's your exit though? That's what you don't know. When you talk about volume, look at this volume. That's crazy. So first minute of the day, 8 million. Second minute, another 8 million, 6 million. Wow. I mean, if you were in this on a day, I would say get out right here, right? It just triple topped at 36.5. Uh, that's certainly a trading exit. Um, wow, look at look at that thing hopping around. It's kind of crazy. All right. Uh, that's why you see it here is because I have an investor in it. So, uh, all right, CRM up 6%. Uh, I like that as a long-term uh, name. Uh, I, don't, I was selling it a while ago. Um, I don't know how much I, I know I have some in the book because it's right there. Um, Palantir getting some love. So let's look at uh, Palantir. 
Uh, but pretty much here's your five day on Palantir, right? So, excuse me, uh, 15 minutes, is that the five day? Yep, five day on Palantir. So finally, it's getting some love. Uh, I did have somebody ask me the other day is, is when, how much of this stuff are you going to buy? And I'm like, well, as much as, uh, as much as you can stand, right? So I think it's a great long-term uh, theme. All right, low Zoom, CRISPR Therapeutics, MindMed, getting some love. MindMed really hasn't done much since I talked about it, so you can tell nobody's listening to me. Um, but the, you know, it's bouncing off a of three here, up at 320. I don't know, if you're curious, I have some folks that are really into this stuff, so uh, we'll let them invest in it. All right, let's go to the other side. We've got an Apple call down, so Apple must be down on the day. There it is. Barely in the uh, barely in the red. Not a whole lot of names in the red here. Uh, a couple of therapeutic names. Costco I just had earnings. If I remember, memory serves, they did. Let's see. This is supposed. There we go. We had to pop up for a second. There must be some sweet spot down here that make that pop up. Anyway, there's earnings and uh, there's something. There it is. Okay, maybe I just needed to chill. So uh, 228 estimated, 275, so they did beat earnings, but it's kind of selling off. So I don't know, if you're in Costco, it's a long-term hold. China's selling off a little bit. Let's go back to YY. Down 6% on the day. So, all right, that's it for the uh, long-term stuff. So overall, uh, market's holding in the green here, and we'll, we'll switch over and talk about our 520 uh, nine stuff today. All right, let's look at, okay, the first thing, the complete guide to 529s. So basically, again, like we talked about in the open, you're going to put money away for college. You've already, this is after tax money, so you've already paid for it. You can put it in your 529 plan. You're going to let it accrue. Uh, what's nice about each of your 529 plan statements is that it shows you, you know, total principal and it shows you your earnings. Unlike your brokerage account doesn't do that and it kind of irritating uh, because people will be down a little bit and you can actually, if it did that, you'd show them, it's like, well, hey, here, you've only ever put 100,000 into this thing and it's at 700,000 now. So maybe you shouldn't be that excited that it just went from, you know, 710 to 700,000. Yeah, you know, anyway. Um, but your 529 statements do get broken out that way. Be and there's a very reason for that because uh, when they do, if you would pull some money out of a 529 plan, <clears throat> say you have 100000 in there and you wanted to pull out $10,000, well, that's 10%. You would be taxed on 10, you know, if you're using it for education, it doesn't matter. But if you're not and you pull it out, you're going to pay a 10% penalty on whatever you pull out and you're going to get taxed on a portion of that, the earnings. So anyhow, that, that's why it's broken out so you can actually do the math for you. You do get a tax form. Uh, it's a 1098T. I believe is the tax form that goes with the uh, tuition. Um, either way, whether you use it for tuition or not. And then when you figure your taxes, that's when you figure out, you know, okay, I pulled this money out on the 1098T. Now do I not have to pay tax because I use it for education or did I use it to buy a boat and uh, heck with the kids and now I have to pay my penalty in taxes. So anyhow, all that's right there and available for you. Uh, let's see. You can use it for private school now. So that was one of the, um, you know, think latest kind of, I uh, think it was Secure Act, if you will. You could um, use it for five <laughs> private schools up to ten thousand a year per child. So if you're in the private school game, you know that can add up. Um, you can now use that for for that. Um, it goes by state. Uh, there's no real reason to use your state unless you're getting a tax advantage. So if you're here in Texas where there's no state tax, then it doesn't matter. You can use any one of them. Um, I use both the TD Ameritrade. Well, personally, I use the Schwab one now since all my assets are with Schwab. Um, but before that, I used TD Ameritrade, which was which was fine as well. Those are both tied to states. Uh, I think the Schwab is the New York one, and then TD Ameritrade is technically Nebraska that has the contract for that. But same same. Uh, don't even sweat that. They all have about the same options. Uh, there's none of them that offer like individual stocks for this because if there would, I'd be in that one, right? Because of the uh, the upside that you get for individual stocks versus uh, being in these funds. All right, the cost of college. Yep, we all know that is expensive. I was actually looking last night, sent out some emails for my oldest uh, looking at uh, Ole Miss. All of a sudden she's interested in that. So they have an entrepreneurship program. 
uh, that would be perfect for. And I think that's great. So may, maybe we'll be applying there. We shall see. Okay, the, how much can you put in? We talked about earlier, uh, 15,000 is the gift tax per year, per person, per child. So it's a lot of pers in there. Um, so a normal couple, if you will, who's got three kids, again, 75,000 per uh, child, per person. So since it's a, you know, say it's a husband, wife team, um, then each of you could put in 75 one time and call that good for 150K for that child. Um, and if you have three kids, you could do that each child. Uh, you also can, from there, you're locked out for five years due to the gift tax rule. However, there are times where you can, there's a, there's a specific function to be able to do a super funding again. Um, and it is legal, but you have to do a whole bunch of math. So Excel spreadsheet time. Okay, tax advantages. Again, this money goes tax-free. It can be used for a lot of different things. Uh, tuition, room and board, computers, um, other supplies, that sort of thing. If you buy a house for your, now be careful, consult your CPA, there's my disclaimer. Um, but you can buy a house, say your kid goes to Ole Miss and you go buy a house in Ole Miss and have her uh, or him live in it uh, with all their friends. You can, their portion of the rent, say it's by themselves, so they're paying rent to you, the parent, uh, you can use money out of a 529 for that. If you buy the house and like four of them are renting it, then you have to split the rent amongst the four and then that portion can be used. So anyhow, there's a way where you can really maximize your, your money because you're actually paying money out of the 529 to yourself, but you gotta make sure you do it right and legal, um, but there's a way to do it. All right. So the questions that always come up, what if they get a scholarship? If they get a scholarship, you can withdraw uh, up to that amount. Um, per year out of the 529. So you pull that money out and then you simply uh, withdraw that same amount or less from your 529, which will generate that 1098T. And then when you file your taxes, you will explain that this is offsetting a scholarship. And then you will have to submit proof that you received that scholarship, the student actually attended and all of that exciting stuff. So uh, there's a way to do it. Uh, and obviously, if the kids don't go to college or you need to pay off your uh, crypto taxes because you're now multi mega millionaire, um, then you can raid this account. Uh, if you take the account out, again, say there's $100,000 in there and half of it is earnings and half of it is principal that you put in. Uh, if you take out the entire account, you will get penalized on 10% of the entire account. So that's 10,000. And then um, 10, you have to pay taxes on the 50 K. So pretty heavy penalty for taking out. So you're better off uh, treating this stuff as a one-way door, put it in, let it grow and, and go from there. All right. That's all we've got. The last thing I was talking about is tax loss harvesting. So I will just click on this. Uh, there's an article there today, tax door loophole. So crypto is not a security. That's been the issue. That's why you don't have the ETFs and stuff. Um, so since it's not a security, it is not tied to the wash sale rule. So you can take losses in there and then you can buy it right back. So obviously when I do that in December for folks, uh, hopefully you don't have losses, right? You want your portfolios to make money, but if you do have losses, uh, there's some manipulation, but then I have to set a note to myself that I cannot buy that same thing back, uh, especially if I sold something I love, can't turn around and buy it back uh, for 30 days. So you can with crypto. All right, that's all I have for today. You hope you guys have a fantastic weekend. Thanks for uh, checking in. We'll see you back on Tuesday. Uh, remember, so Tuesday is the first market day next week. All right. Have a good one. Bye.